Belle Gunness is thought to be one of America's most notorious female serial killers. She was a crazy bitch who killed a whole lot of people, men to be specific, for money, greed, and possibly revenge. Brutally taking the lives of more than 40 people, her hog farm became the scene of some of America's most gruesome killings. She would bring the men down into this fruit cellar or basement, if you will, and there would dissect them piecemeal. Some believe that Belle died with her children in a fire at their farmhouse, but to this day, most believe that she faked her death and fled Laporte with her reported fortune. Belle Gunness was one of our very first American serial killers. She was the original Black Widow. A psychopathic killer does not hesitate to even kill her own children. Belle Gunness was a ferocious and formidable woman. Described as money hungry, she would use lonely hearts ads to lure rich, unsuspecting bachelors to her Indiana hog farm. There, she would poison their food, hack off their body parts, and bury their remains throughout her estate. Our paranormal investigation will take us to Laporte, Indiana, where we'll retrace Bell's murderous reign of terror. But what will this monster have to say from beyond the grave? Will she reveal the truth behind her savage murders? Or will she be as elusive in death as she was in life? We aim to find out. In our attempt to communicate with the spirit of this gruesome, money-thirsty serial killer, this paranormal investigation will take us to the small, sleepy town of Laporte, Indiana. The hometown to Belle Gunness' sprawling hog farm, slaughterhouse, and the scene of up to 40 gruesome murders, including those of her children. We'll visit the tough private school where she sent her three children the antiques mall where she spent her victim's wealth to indulge the selfish fantasies. And finally, we hold a seance at the very farm site that Gunnis brutally murdered, cut up and buried her victims. But in attempting to make contact with her evil spirit, which Belle Gunnis would we find? The family-loving, hard-working hog farmer or the relentless, money-hungry black widow? We hope to find out as we attempt to communicate with this cunning killer in her afterlife. Belle Gunness was born in 1859. Raised as Brynhild Storset, she lived in the small village of Selbu, Norway. As a child, her farming family were poor and life offered little in the way of luxuries. As soon as she was old enough, Belle fled to begin a new life across the globe on the promising shores of the new world, America. Her criminal history uh, really begins in Chicago. She married a guy by the name of Mads Sorensen, another Norwegian. And they had a candy shop there, which didn't do very well, but was very well insured. Um, it mysteriously burned down. After the store burned down, Belle Gunness gathered up a life insurance policy, bought a plot of land in Laporte, Indiana. And it was really at this point when she launched her criminal career in full throttle. Belle's murderous reign began here in Laporte, and so would our journey. I arranged to meet Laporte historian Bruce Johnson in the hope that he may be able to paint a picture of what Belle was like in the early days. She traded her home in Austin, Illinois for this farm here in Laporte. I think she wanted to get out of the Chicago area because of all the questioning that was going on with the death of the husband, her first husband. Uh, when her husband died mysteriously on the one day that his two life insurance policies overlapped, um, that made it very suspicious. The neighbors were suspicious, the doctors as well, and the relatives. Can you tell me what sort of place Laporte would have been when Belle Gunness moved here? Uh, probably about the same size it is today. We're about 20,000 people. Hasn't changed much over the years. Um, it was a manufacturing community, but mostly a farming community. There were many immigrants who were coming here to uh, start new lives. So the, the children that lived with Belle when she was in La Porte, were they biologically her children or were they all adopted? Do we know that? None of them were adopted that we can prove. None of them she gave birth to. 
Um, as far as we know, they were all foster children. I mean, to me, somebody who adopts lots of children, that tells you that that person might have a protective kind of matriarchal sort of side to them. And yet, as we know, she also had a very different side to her, which was as a murderess. So I'm just trying to want to imagine how those two went together. And what bothers me the most is the children, um, how she could raise these children, especially Jenny Olson. 16 years she raised this girl and then to kill her. I, I just can't imagine must, what must be going through her mind. To keep up an appearance of wealth and respectability, Belle sent her three young foster children here to the once expensive and prestigious St. John's School. Look at this, look, 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 look. Strong that? activity. It's here that our paranormal investigation for the spirit of Belle Gunness will begin. Jesus Christ, I just saw a figure walking up through there. Belle Gunness is believed to have brutally murdered up to 40 people in the late 1890s, burying their butchered remains across her 50-acre hog farm in LaPorte, Indiana. When Belle moved to LaPorte, it, it seemed like she established herself as a, uh, a woman of considerable means. She um, sent her children to school and to church, and she seemed to li be living a pretty sumptuous life. She was a pig farmer. She, she hired uh, farm hands out to help her do crops. And she would go and talk to the townspeople and was very, you know, part of the community. In 1902, Belle Sorensen married for the second time. A local butcher named Peter Gunnis, uh, who was a man of some influence and uh, owned some property in Laporte, Indiana. Uh, however, uh, Gunnis was not long for this world. Our search for the spirit of this formidable monster has brought us here to the notoriously haunted St. John's School. Belle disguised her murderous intentions and presented herself as a loving mother and pillar of the community. This school was the perfect location to search for paranormal evidence surrounding Belle and her murdered children. So Bobby, this is the first stop on our paranormal tour. It's yeah. St. John's Lutheran School. As you can see, it's abandoned. It looks pretty creepy. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? People in this neighborhood tend to avoid the building, they tell us. They feel that it's probably haunted. The reason that it's interesting for us is because Belle Garnis sent her children here to school. So hopefully this location is going to be the start of being able to piece together the Belle Garnis store. Built in 1890, St. John's School was only two miles from the Gunnis household and was famous for educating the children of foreign families who'd moved to Laporte, a tough regimented private school. St. John's believed in discipline at all costs. As the Indiana ghost trackers arrived to set up for the investigation, Bobby took the chance to explore this huge four-story building before nightfall. 